So I've pulled out a whole bunch of ingredients from my cabinets. This is just sort of random stuff. This is the basic drink I've been making for the last few months. Now outside of my house right now, it's winter time. The snow's deep and it's cold and it's kind of hibernation time. And I've been training a lot with club bells actually, which is something I'm excited to show you guys at some point, which are, um, it's like a strength training thing that I've been doing. And so um, I've been working on what's a good drink for me to actually keep on body mass, lean body mass keep my energy levels high, but not overfeed myself because I'm not outside as much as I would be in the uh, summertime, as an example. So what I've done is I've pulled a bunch of the ingredients here together, and I'll kind of tell you a little bit about each one as I put them into this chaga tea and turn that into a chaga elixir. Okay, first thing I, I'm going to throw in there is some salt. Every time um, I make a drink, I always make sure I put salt in it, and I think one of the things we do in our culture is underestimate our salt needs. That has to do with the fact that as we were more and more domesticated, our salt needs were taken care of us by food processors. And so they would add the salt to our food for us and we would buy it in boxes or cans already salted. A lot of us didn't realize how much salt we actually need and how important salt's been through time to all civilizations because they all have to secure a salt source. This is a collection of salts that I've had um, for a long time. Whenever I find new salts, whether they be red salts or black salts or rock salts or fresh sea salts, I like to throw a little into this jar, and so that's like a mixture. And I also have separate containers of different salts as well. I'm notoriously bad at measuring out how much stuff I'm going to use, and so I'm going to try to give you a recipe out of this. So actually what I'll do is I'll give you a pinch of salt. You'd be surprised at how much better salt will make foods taste if you're not using a lot of salt now, especially things like drinks or chocolates, things that are sweet. You'd be surprised at how important salt can be to those kind of recipes. Okay, next thing I'm going to throw in there is some chia seed. The reason is we want to thicken that up. That's real thin, and if we drink that like it is, it's not going to be real filling. And so I'm looking to add some protein. I'm looking to add something gelatinous to thicken the drink. It's what I call an elixir craft. And you can check out my elixir craft course at elixircraft.com or on the sidebar of the danielvitalis.com website. That's a course I designed to really teach people about making drinks. If they want to like add them in as a significant part of their diet. And one of the things we talk about is substrates, gels, things that are thickeners to the drink. Well, chia seeds, one of the best thickeners I know about, that's a bunch of chia seeds I mixed with water until they turned into a gel. And that's, so that's a chia gel. I'm going to take, that's a quarter cup there. I'm going to do probably a half of, yeah, about a half a cup of chia seed. I tend to eyeball these things. It's a little strange for me to measure them out and try to determine exactly how much they are. This is mesquite powder from Ultimate Superfood. I really like them. They're a really, really good company and they produce extremely high quality products. So if you're looking for the best of the best, Ultimate Superfoods is definitely a place to go and they'll ship you bulk like that actually in Mylar, which is a great storage container because it protects the food inside from light from UV, things like that. So the skeet's a really nice tasting powder, but it's, it's a flower that was traditionally used by the Apache Indians of the Southwest. I think that's cool, it's like an indigenous food. Um, very unchanged, its genetics are very similar to the wild plant. I'm gonna use about a quarter cup there. That's gonna add a lot of flavor, and it's gonna add a lot of protein, amino acids, things like lysine, which are hard to find sometimes in your foods. Okay, next thing I'm going to add some vanilla powder. That's vanilla powder I put into a glass jar to preserve its freshness, but that also came from Ultimate Superfoods. And vanilla is something that I really prefer fresh beans over the extracts. And the powder is beans ground right up. I find it really convenient. I like using it. <clears throat> it's not the cheapest product in the world, but if you buy it in bulk, it's easier to use more. And then you get to really experience vanilla like an herb and actually experience its properties. Most people only ever experience its flavor. So I'm going to use a full teaspoon of vanilla. That's going to make that a really strongly flavored drink. And the vanilla really brings out the vanillic acid that's found in the chaga itself. And so there's a synergy there of flavor. And so there ends up being a taste that's so much, so floral. Remember, vanilla is an orchid fruit. And so we can really bring out that floral uh, aroma. Now, one thing I want to make sure I add to this drink is some fat. In the past, I worked a lot with coconut oil. Today, I'm working a lot more with butter, grass-fed butter, and I go to farms to get that, meet the cows there. My favorite butter comes from Jersey cows, and I find those in my local area, 
And that means that my fat source is coming from my environment, whereas the coconut oil is coming off and really from pretty far away. So it allows me to get a local fat, and I think it has properties to it that you just can't get out of plant fats, and that's why I use it. Um, I know that some, a lot of vegans follow this kind of um, nutritional paradigm, and so that might seem a little strange to them. But after studying the works of people like Weston Price, I've come to believe that butter is extremely important to my overall health strategy at this point in my life. So what I've got here is a piece of butter that I got from a butter mold. And it was made by a family that uses traditional wooden butter molds. So what I'm going to do is just slice a piece of that off and add that to the drink. <clears throat> I'd say that the piece I'm using here is about a tablespoon's worth. Nice pat of butter that's going to add saturated fat to the drink. We have grossly underestimated our saturated fat needs in this culture. In fact, our culture's kind of waged a war on saturated fat and convinced us that saturated fats are bad for us. It turns out that cholesterol and saturated fat are extremely important components of your diet. And if you don't have a good source of them, you may be suffering nutritionally. So things like butter are a great way to add those things back in. Remember, like I said, cholesterol is a, cholesterol is extremely important to your diet. In fact, cholesterol is what we make all of our hormones out of, and cholesterol is found coating all of our nerves. Our whole nervous system relies on cholesterol to protect us from short circuits in our nervous system. These are free-range eggs from my local environment here. Again, I visit farms and I find people who are raising their animals, husbanding their animals in a traditional way, in an intelligent way, in a humane way. And I like to get eggs laid by these chickens every day who pick at the ground and actually eat bugs, they eat ticks, they eat worms, they eat chips of mica, they produce extremely mineralized high quality eggs. I like to add those raw right into my drinks. So what I'll do is just break that open, drop the whole egg in there. Now when I was a kid, eggs were considered really good for you. As I got a little older, eggs were considered bad for you. Then it came out, well that eggs were good for you but just the whites. Later, it turned out, while well, the whites aren't good for you, it's just the yolks. Eggs, egg, eggs go through this cycle in our current nutritionist culture, our nutritionism culture, where they're good for you and then they're bad for you. The truth is our ancestors have eaten eggs forever, and they've always been considered one of the most complete foods, if not the most complete food available. Each egg is a complete cell. It's one cell. And it contains everything needed to produce an animal cell. That's amazing. It's a very complete nutrition. I use a couple of raw eggs a day very often when I'm doing drinks like this. It's a great way to add protein to the diet, cholesterol, saturated fats, omega fats. So I'm going to throw three raw eggs into that drink. Now I guess for the sake of um, legality, I'll say um, only use raw eggs at your own risk and they may blah 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 blah, you know the drill. Um, however, I'm a big fan personally of using raw eggs and I use them a lot. And I have actually ever since I was a teenager, on and off, they've been, they've been in and out of my life like that. I did a long period of my life as a vegan, but previous to that, I ate raw eggs consistently and never had any problems with